Hello, this is Mike Lively from Northern Kentucky University, and today I'd like to talk about HTTrack Website Copier. Now, their website is at www.htrack.com. This is a piece of software I've used for a number of years. It works great, and you want to make sure you use it properly as well. You know, about 99% of the people on the web are really honest, but there's that 1% you have to watch out for, and don't be a part of that crew. Now, how we often use this software is we'll have a client come to us, and they'll go, hey, you know, I've got this website, it's my website, I need it changed, but I don't have access to it, I've lost the passwords, or it may take them two or three weeks to get the material. So you can use this HE track to actually track that site, download it to your own C drive, and start modifying right there, and just cut out that middleman as far as waiting for files to come or trying to access lost passwords. We often use it like that. You can read more about it here from the site, just scroll down, read about HT track, and then when you're done, go to the download page. and just click on the executable and download it and it may ask you for a proxy server or whatever just ignore that and just go to the install and we installed it and I'm going to show you how to use it right now I'm on HT track and I'm going to show you how to use it so let's just click the next button and first thing you want to do is uh, create a project name what you're going to call your website that you're going to download I'm going to call this NKU download I'm going to actually track the NKU website. And you want to put it in a folder. So I'm going to, I've am i created a folder on my desktop called Websites. And go click on that folder. There you go. And it's going to download uh, whatever site I put into the tracker. Now let's hit Next. And it's going to ask me to put that site right here, Web Address URL. And what I'd like to do is actually go to that website and copy and paste that web address. I'm actually on the uh, NKU website and I'm going to copy that address. Okay. And I'm going to paste it right there. Now, this copy and pasting can save you a lot of heartache. Typically, when I code, I copy and paste names because if I type something wrong, it may take me a long time to find that variable. This will just save you a little bit of time when you're tracking. The other thing you need to do is set options. If you don't set options, it's going to try to download every single link on that page. So I'm going to hit limits and I'll set this to two. I'll OK. And now I'm ready to start tracking. And just hit Next and Finish. And it's starting to track. And it's going to download that whole website, or at least to the first two links, on my C drive in the folder Websites. OK, I went ahead and paused it because it took a few minutes to uh, track that site. And I've got the finished, and so I'll hit Finish. It's going to ask me if I want to download another site, and I don't. But let's take a look at what we got. So now let's take a look at what we actually downloaded. I've just opened up the website folder, and in that I have two folders, NKU and NKU Download. This is a previous download, the NKU, and this is the one I just downloaded, NKU Download. And the index basically governs those two. We don't care about that. That's the HD track stuff. But as a developer, I want to go right to this NKU Download folder and see what I got. And I got the whole structure of the website. And here's my www.nku.edu. Let's click on that. And there's all the pages that download it. And you can see, for example, here's an image page. It gives me all the image resources. And if there's sounds or videos, you may get those as well. Sometimes not. Sometimes you do. And so you have the whole structure here. You can actually open one of these up and start working on the site itself. I'm going to go back one. And I'm going to click Index and see if the page comes up. And just give it a moment. And there you have it, the NKU page came up, but notice it's not coming from the network. It's actually coming from my drive. So it's actually able to extract all those files. And if I was going to do some modifications as a web developer here, I could do that. Now, once again, this is not for you to just take someone's website and re-engineer it for your own. This is for you to use with clients when they have forgotten their password or for uh, speeding up the development process or maybe looking at how something was built. But once again, about 99% of us is gonna, are going to do it that way. 1% will not. What does that mean to you? That means that when you put something on the web, be aware. It's not protected. And many times, people can just extract it this easily. Uh, so if you don't want that to happen, uh, take precautions. Thanks a lot. This is Mike Lively. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial.